God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, last week we got to, to preach in West Virginia. Amen. It was good. Everybody was uh, seemed like they were pretty receptive. And uh, we, uh, at the shepherd's house, you know, we made a pledge for them for like $10,000, and I gave them 1000 of it, you know, amen, <laughs> try to help them on their journey, amen, and um, as you know, Gerald Crabb's going to be coming, amen, come on, amen, man, get all psyched up, like, get, get ready to receive a blessing, a miracle, you know, and I don't want to, like, when, you know, like, I know last year, you know, it was a big plug for the building fund. You know what we're doing. It's a good time to catch up on your ties. How about if you just called up on your ties for the building fund? Wouldn't that be cool? Really? How about if you really tied this year for the building fund and all of that money will go directly to it? Amen. Then you'd be squaring a deal up with God. Amen. Then the day that you do get in the kingdom, he might say, hey, that was something good you did because now your grandchildren have a place that they can learn about Jesus because I'm not coming back as soon as I thought. Amen, right? Come on. Amen? Isn't it a good place? You can tie into anything else, and it's only temporal. But if you tie into things of God, it's for eternity. Amen. Who believes that? Amen. And um, some big miracles happened uh, since Gerald's been here. His one, he was, he needed a bypass, and I directed him to that, amen. Isaac was running out of blood, amen. He got a healing on that. I got my diabetes and that under control, amen. Come on, I, there were some miracles, amen. I got Joanne out of the house. I'm telling you, miracles have been happening, you know. Well, I had him back, too, the girls back. They're so comical. They'll tell you the craziest things, you know. And um, so this time I took them to a toy store. I said, not like happened last time. Yeah, I know what happened last time, Pop. You got mad at us and we started crying. Yeah, I said, you were going to have me put away. You started crying and they thought I was kidnapping you guys. So this time I just went in and just let them get anything they want. And so when we went to the, the cash out line at the Target, they said, is it somebody's birthday? And I said, yeah, it's somebody's birthday. You know, I wasn't lying. Yeah, somebody, but it wasn't their birthday, amen. But uh, it was good, and I had a good time with them. And Joan, you know, she gets all emotional, and she started crying. And I said, don't cry that much. You're coming back at the end of the month for another week. So amen on that. So that's some good stuff. And Joseph, we finally got him married off to Olivia. She was only crazy enough to take him, amen. The dear girl has been put through torture, amen. And we had a good time uh, at 4th of July. So you guys, too. You went to Miami. I went to my house, amen. It was nicer, amen. Come on. But we had a good time. And so summer's here. You see where we're at. We're in July. You got a few months left. So let's try to really focus in this month on the things of God, amen. Let's really try to focus in. I got a little word for us today, and let's bow our heads, and I'm going to ask God to help me out with this. In the mighty name of Jesus, could you please touch us today, touch this word, bless it. Let me bring it forth the way that you want it, Lord, so it touched the heart, souls, and mind. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Do I have a, 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 that uh, other microphone, Bill? If I could get that, amen. Amen. All right. As soon as Sarah gets seated, we can start. We waited for her to come in. Amen. She called ahead and said, save me a seat. Thank you. Ted, you did good today. Amen. One thing about Ted, he's the man of his house. He makes all the calls, you know. So we're going to preach about, nah, that, that was, I almost had a good message, George, but I backed off of it, you know. Amen. 
Let's go to that first scripture. Amen. Title of this message today, How Do I Get Out of the Maury Clay? When I'm down to the bottom, when I'm out, how do I get myself out? Have you ever been sunk down before? You're so down. Man, it seems like there's no way for you to get out. It seems like you got yourself into a, a rut, and it's no way out of it. But God has a way for you to proceed out of there, amen? God has a way to take you out of a pit and put you on solid rock foundation, amen? Come on. And a lot of times we don't think that can happen, amen, because we're so far down, amen? But I'm going to use the great prophet Jeremiah as an illustration today, and we're going to take from this some good points, and we're going to start applying them, what, to our lives. Look at your neighbor or look at your husband or wife or whoever it is to you, amen, and say, let's apply this to our life. Somebody say amen. Amen. There's no good of hearing a word if you don't apply it to your life. Amen. Actually, putting the application in motion. Joseph, for instance, is he here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an illustration on Joseph. Flaw in Joseph's character. You send Joseph and you say, get some drinks for the, the, our workmen. They're not hard men. Notice I said workmen. What does Joseph do? He gets himself a drink. He gives his dad one. Then he leaves them in the truck. They never get the drinks. It never applies it. And he says, well, if they're that dumb not to go get the drink, then I guess they didn't want it. Well, I said, why not just give it to them? Amen. Have you ever did that? Have you ever bought something and you never wore it? Come on, ladies. Come on. Be honest. Look how you wasted your husband's money. Come on. Which woman's going to raise their hand and admit that today? You bought something and never wore it. Look at you. Not one of them will admit it. Smart. You're smart. One admitted it. How about back over there? Any of the Westerners, have you done that before? Now, look at the men. Have you ever bought something, men? You bought it and you never used it. I have. Come on. Anybody? I'm, there's two guys that's done it. Why? Because a lot of times you really didn't need it to start with. But it looked good, and it's usually a spur of the moment stuff. But if it's something, Pete, that you really need, say if you're going to a wedding, a tie, well, maybe you get two ties and you didn't use the one and you never used it. Maybe the women, you bought two pairs of shoes, but they were tight on your feet or something, and you just... It didn't work out, but you never had time to take them back or exchange them. Sometimes that happens, and they get put up in the the closet, and later on you discover these things, and sometimes you sell them, and sometimes you throw them away, and a lot of times you said, wow, I never used that. And it's like a gift. It's like something you found. Maybe you're going through your guitar case, and there's some notes on a song, Tony, that you, you were Writing and play with, you never finished it, and you, you break it back out, and you try it one more time. Sometimes it's stored gifts that we have. Sometimes we never put them in play. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with getting something and not using it and finding it later and putting it to you. Say amen. That's a, that's a smart move. And that's what the prophet Jeremiah was about. He was a weeping prophet. And he kept trying to tell them the word over and over, bring us something good. You're going down because you have rejected God and his covenant. Amen. And that when that rejection comes, amen, then you find yourself in a pit. And what was so unique about this, what I'm trying to bring it across, the whole nation was suffering. Jeremiah was the man of God, but he suffered too. Amen. 
the same God that punished Israel, the punishment was on him too because he felt the pain, he felt the sorrow, he felt the hurt that God felt from the people that actually turned from him and went a different way, amen. How about that? To turn from God and start worshiping Satan himself, amen. What a turning point. Do you understand that what Israel did when they worshiped Bill? They were actually worshiping Satan themselves. They actually took their kids, put them up on a burnt thing, and burnt them. Actually sacrificed their children to Baal. Amen. And they said the blood would be so this orange thing that mow it or whatever it is, that it, it would go so I was reading this story on it and would the kids blood would actually start in there and it start turning blood red the thing would and they would give their children constantly and constantly their very own flesh and blood giving it to satan himself and that's can you imagine a country that had god's blessing and promises and turn that wicked amen come on come on somebody think Man, I'm trying to put this in today's term. Think about it. Let's take a look at what happened here. So they took Jeremiah and cast him in the, the dungeon of, what is that, Malchia, the, the king's son. And it was a court of a prison. And they let Jeremiah down with ropes. And in the dungeon, there was no water but mar. And Jeremiah sank into the mar. This thing was like, it was a well, like with water out of it. And as they lowered him, he started sinking, sinking, sinking. Now, when he stayed there, so when he used the bathroom, it was in there. As he started sinking more, 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 every... So at last, he's submerged in mar. At last, he's, he's engulfed in this, this pit, this well thing. Can you imagine that? Think about it. And think about what sin has done with us from our relationship with God and how sunk we are. The hidden sins that you have, that you have and nobody else knows about, that you do constantly and you think you get away with it constantly. One day what's going to happen, the very thing is going to take you down into a pit. And that pit is going to consume you, and you will not be able to move. Unless you have the great I am, Jesus Christ, send rescuers to pull you out of that Mari clay. Amen. Man has sunk in a prophet that did nothing but prophesize to him. A prophet that did nothing but tell him what God was about and what he was about to do. Let's take a look at what happened here to Weeping Prophet. Jerusalem actually was taken away from them. They lost Jerusalem the first time. There it was, 626, when he started uh, his ministry, amen. By the time it was finished, Jerusalem was gone, out of the hands of the Israelites. What's today happening? Jerusalem it's not, or what shall I say, it's not where Israel wants it to be, amen. There's too much Muslim influence, too much things around it. Why? Because this little thing, that city, it's not worth much. There have been more prophets' blood shed in Jerusalem than any other city in the world. Wow, what a claim. What a claim. Jesus himself, when he went into Jerusalem, he said, Jerusalem, how I long to weep for you and take you like hens underneath. He said, how I, I tried. And man, the day he went in there and they were going, hallelujah, at the end of the day, man, they were going to put him to death. Amen. Come on. Can you imagine that? They lost Jerusalem. And then what else did they lose? They lost the very temple of God. Solomon's temple destroyed. The temple taken away. Their, 
the holy city taken away, and then the, 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 the temple of God, amen, where he said that his train filled the temple, and they, they couldn't even preach in there, where God himself, my God, dwelled in there, amen. He come out of, from a tent and dwelled in there, and they said the presence of God was so thick. They lost it because they went out and sucked, and they seeked Satan's God itself. Come on. The things of Satan. The very children, my God, at last they started eating their children. Come on. Amen. That's how wicked, that's how corrupt they got. From a nation that was built on God to a nation that turned completely against God. Completely against God. Wow, can you imagine that? You lost the holy city. Now you've lost the temple of God. Now you've lost the generations of children that you destroyed. Amen. You lost your children now. Wow. Jeremiah's in a pit. It represents how man, my God, without God, will sink. Amen. It represents how you, without God, are going down. Amen. Not up. Amen. Amen. It represents the stink, the foulness of sin in your life, sin in your camp. My God, destruction of your home, destruction of your family, amen. Destruction of your loved ones, amen. Because you have got yourself into a pit, amen, and you don't know how to get out of it. I'm telling you, there's a way to get out. If you can call on the name of Jesus Christ today, if you can take that step, amen, and say, God, I no longer want to be down, amen. I want you to pull me up, amen. So they took Jeremiah and cast him into the, this pit. There was no water in it but mar. He sank, all consumed up, the great prophet in there. And they put him there. And the king said, wouldn't even, he said, man, go ahead. You do what you want. I ain't got no authority over this. Sinking. Sinking. He gave up on God and you want to seek foreign gods. You allowed them in your house. You allowed them in your church. You allowed them in your workplace. You allowed them around the kids. You allowed them around your mom. You allowed them around your dad. Now your whole family is corrupted with this thing that you brought in to the home, amen. This devil thing that there's no way out, amen, lest God completely destroys it, amen. And you're sunk down through. And everybody knows you're sunk, but nobody's saying anything because they say, you got yourself in this predicament. Come on, amen. You ever seen somebody like that before? That's good for you. That's good. Man, you got yourself in it. I know I got myself in it, but how do I get myself out of it? Come on, amen. Yes, I've been down that pit myself, amen. Yes, I know how it feels to be down there, how it feels to be sinking. And all the things around you, nobody hears you, and you're crying out that night. You're crying in your bed, and you're asking for God to take something away, and it keeps going into you. But you know something what I think, and it comes to my mind every time? I think of Paul that day when he had that thorn in his side, amen. And I think of Paul that day when he said, Satan, man, has been trying to put this thing into me himself, amen. And you know what he said? My God said to him, my grace is sufficient for thee because my power is made perfect in your weakness. <laughs> when Jeremiah was weak, that's when he was strong, George. When you're in that pit, man, and there's nobody but you and God, you start asking yourself, how did I get here? It wasn't one day that you just took a turn and said, I'm going in the pit. You didn't just get up that morning and say, I'm looking for self-destruction. But somehow, you crossed the line of insanity. 
and you won over to Satan's camp. And once you go over, wow, you're in hell. You are in a living hell every day. Needle in your arm. Every morning, needle in your arm. Every afternoon, a needle in your arm. You say, man, I just want to get well. Needle in your arm. Every day at the bar, glass in your hand. Glass in your hand. Glass in your hand. Every day you're at the doctor's. Another pill. Another pill. Another one. Man, I need one to sleep. Need one to get up. Need one to look at her face in the morning. Amen. Give me two of them. My God, she's ugly. Every day, every day, you're at the casino every day. Money down, money down, money down. Every day, every day. And now you're in the pit. Now you got yourself sinking. My God, you can't pay your payments. You can't pay the house. You don't know which payment to pay at last because you don't work anymore. You're too busy being in Satan's camp and entertaining the demons that you possess. And you wonder, how did I get into this? First thing a man or a Christian will get into it, you stop coming to church. You stop coming. You no longer come to church. Then you go back to church. The singing doesn't sound anymore the same. Like Saul, the anointing isn't there anymore. So you say, oh man, the singer's no good. The preacher isn't the same anymore. The people aren't the same anymore. Because now you've separated from God. You have went down the path of self-destruction in the enemy's camp. And now you, you have something, would you? Because misery likes something. Do you know what it likes? Company. So let me take her with me. Let me take him with me. And as you're going, amen, all the self-destruction, all the people that depended on you to come to church, to read your Bible, to take a stand for God, you've went to the enemy's camp, so your family is no longer together. You're in turmoil because you have crossed the line into darkness. But God has a plan. He's saying that prison can't hold my children back because there's no weapon formed, George, that's going to prosper against a child of God. Amen. So now you're down there. You're by yourself. You have to repent. You have to say, I want out. Amen. And when you do repent, you call on the name of Jesus for real in your heart. And man, he sends somebody for you. Go ahead to that next Jeremiah. Hold on for a minute. So Eb Malek took the men with him, went to the house of the king under the treasury, and took from there the old clothes and rags, and led him down by the rope into the dungeon to Jeremiah. Go to 12. Then Eb Malek and the Ethiopian said to Jeremiah, Please put these old clothes and rags under your armpits, under the ropes. And Jeremiah did so. You know why? Because it would have ripped his arms out. He was so far down. His, only his armpits was exposed. That's how deep he was in the mud. And that's how deep we can get in and God can still pull us out. Amen. Who believes that? Come on, amen. You're covered with it. The mud, the dirt, the filth, the disgust. Man, everybody looks at you as filth now. Look where he's at. 
Look how far down he is. Well, I'm going to tell you, myself had been down there. And when I called on the name of Jesus that day and I asked him to pull me out of that clay, amen, he sent me some ropes, amen, some old clothes, amen, some rags, my God, put under my arms, amen, those filthy rags that I needed to get out of it, amen. He was going to make them white as snow, amen. He was going to do a washing with the blood of Jesus from Calvary, amen, to get me out of that pit, amen, and give me a life, amen that would be new, amen, that I could have and live, amen, and walk freely without bondage and chains on me anymore, that I could come out of the pit. But I had to listen to get out of the pit. Come on. You have to listen to the word of God to get out of your pit. Now you have to not only listen, you have to apply the word to your life. Wow. This guy is preaching a little today. You didn't think that Harvard education would kick in, did you, Rosemary? Apply it. The things you bought before, what was it? Paid for it. Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary paid for you with blood and his body. You've been bought and paid with a price. Now it's time to use it to get out of the pit. It's there. The gift is there. Now apply it. Put it in. Go for it. Take it. Run with it. Go to 13. So they pulled Jeremiah up with the ropes and lifted him out of the dungeon or the dungeon or whatever, and Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. You're in prison, but he was in his lowest part. He was in the Mari clay. You were in prisons of prison. You were in hell, fool. You were in hell. You had a taste of hell on earth. And you think that heaven's going to be better than that? Darn right. You need to pull yourself up out. Amen. You need to listen. Amen. Listen to what the word of God's saying. Hold on to the ropes. Get on to it and pull yourself out. The first thing you need to do is get out of the pit. Can I hear? Amen. Get out of that pit. Cut it off. Cut it, cut it off. Get out of the pit. You have to get out of the pit. Israel was so unfaithful. He told them there's going to be invaders in the north. They were so unfaithful to the law, to the covenant. They were so unfaithful. They forsaken God. They were so unfaithful. My God, that. The, the offerings that they were sacrificing wasn't even right. It wasn't even right. And they got themselves into a pit. And that's what the United States is offering you today. The pit. To go down into the mar. You have got to draw a line in your family and say, man... We cannot go there. And you know what it is. How do you know what it is? When in your heart, in your conscience, in your spirit, you know it's wrong, it's wrong. When you do it because they've done it, you're going to take your family into the pit. And once they get to the pit and they get out of it, they're still in prison because they haven't been freed yet to the free indeed, Amen. You have got to get away from it. You have got to move on from it. You have got to wipe your slate clean from it. And then you can rebuild. Let's go to Psalms. I'm ready to close on this. I, I, I want to take you one more place on this. I think everybody's getting where I'm coming from. Amen? Amen? He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the Mari clay. And he set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. 
He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. A new song, a new direction, a newness. Old things have got to pass away. You can't keep doing the old things and think you're going to have new things coming your way. You got to you got to renew yourself. Get yourself back in the right direction. Let people see you and man say, "Hey, I want what they got." Man, if we're Christians, my God, let's go out and be Christians. If we're going to put that mar and that dirt and that filth on us and we're in a pit, amen, how is somebody going to see us and say, hey, how are we getting out of there when they're in a pit themselves, amen? Look where they got their self. And a lot of times we don't even see it. We're so deep in this pit, amen, unless God actually sends somebody over to us, amen, and shows us how to get out, amen. We're going to, at last, our head's going to go all the way down, and we're going to be buried alive. Wow. But today is a day for a chance, a way out, a new direction, a path, not just coming to church, not just coming to a pew, but actually applying it to your life. Look at the sin that you're doing, amen, and saying, Lord, I want to get out of this pit that I am. I want you to give me life more abundant. I not only want to go up to the top, amen, of the prison, but I want the prison doors to open. Set me free. Set me free today. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing to be free? Man, those chains off of you, those addictions off of you, that new life. A new way, hope, a new thing, amen. I'm out of the mar. I'm out of that. Now I can freely walk around. I can freely live. I have a way. God's offering it to you today. I want you to sit while you're sitting right where you're at. Because this is something I want you to really do. I don't want you to even say, hey, man, I go up to the altar. They're going to think this and that. Now, this is the altar right here. If you've got some place to go, go ahead because it's going to take around five, ten minutes. Your kids got some place to go. Got to get a burger or something I can understand. But if you want to say here, amen, and you want to pray for your family, man, you, you see, our generation, maybe it's enough to get us by, amen, just to get us by. To heaven, but it's not enough for the kids and the grandkids. They're going to be in a place, my God, it's going to be so hard to hear the things of God, they won't know what to do. But you have got to be the example. You have got to take your family's hand, and you've got to lead them. Because without you leading them, these people right here in this church, you guys are needed, amen, in your own homes, amen, to bring forth the word of Christ and to live that word in your home, amen. Because you are your only way, or I should say, you through Christ is the only way for them ever to hear the true message of Jesus Christ. It's so watered down now, the message. I listened to a TV evangelist, and I was like, wow, wow. I listened to Tony send me a thing of the new Bible. It's a new term. And I was like, who is this guy? And I said, that's the new they take God all out now to the creator, be good to the world. I was like, wow. You'd be like that one, what was that, Ted and Bill's big adventure? Be most excellent to one another. And they said, oh, wow, man, that was a beautiful religion, man. You are the lifeline to pull your children out of the Mari clay. It's up to you. Are you ready to do something about it or you want your grandchildren to go into the pit? You want these little guys to go into the pit? Then live a Christian life. Live a Christian life at home. Say no to sin, say no, no. No, for me and my house will serve the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen.
Bow your heads. Bow. Lord, I ask for you to intervene. Intervene for these families, for their children, for their grandchildren. Let us be the men and women of God that we're supposed to be, Lord. We know the truth. Let us stand for truth. Let us not compromise with the world so much that we compromise ourselves right out of the heaven's gates. Let us make a stand. When we know what's right, let's do what's right. Let's not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Let us be my God that when people look at us, they say, hey, I want what they have, and that's Jesus Christ. Lord, we've been paid and bought with a price. Christ gave, my God, his blood, gave his life, my God, to set, that, set us free, my God. Let us not take our freedom lightly. Let us not be chained back to these bondages, my God, and so far be sunk down. But, my God, let us be lifted up through Jesus Christ. And somebody said, amen and amen. Amen.